Time now for The Ridiculous, and tonight the world's biggest, most elegant cable news fan has gotten his foxy loxy tail in a twist. That's right, President Trump, a man who thinks journalism is an hour-long phone call where Sean Hannity spoon-feeds him topics like pre-chewed cream of wheat, is on a tirade against his most favored network. Their offense? Fox's actual news division, not their morning zoo crew or primetime propaganda pack, invited a Democrat to appear on its air and it wasn't like some weekend of Bernie's situation. It was an actual living Democrat with an actual pulse. The president tweeted yesterday in part, quote, hard to believe that Fox News is wasting airtime on Mayor Pete, as Chris Wallace likes to call him. Does that sound like a jealous 15-year-old boy to you, Snapchatting his bestie late at night, unsure of exactly what he's feeling and why he feels the way he does? Oh my God, it's hard to believe Jenny would be wasting time on Pete, or Peter, as Chris likes to call him. Oh, the betrayal. When the network you love and rely on for advice and support suddenly gives a platform to someone else, and they give them a standing ovation, someone who's young, an actual Rhodes Scholar, somebody who went to, he went to war, who was a veteran. Ugh, the president, how could they? The president continued his mean boy texting, probably to his best friend, Corey. Gee, he never speaks well of me. I like Mike Wallace better, and Alfred E. Newman, he'll never be president. He <laughs> that's what I imagine him saying, giggling after he writes Alfred E. Newman. First of all, Mike Wallace, the late great 60 Minutes legend, who was a friend of mine, passed away in 2012 and is therefore unavailable for interviews. I think his, his response would be, come on. That was one of Mike Wallace's favorite responses when someone said something absurd. Chris Wallace is a very fine journalist in his own right. Also, the Alfred E. Newman bit that President Trump keeps doing, trying to compare uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg to a fictional Mad Magazine cartoon character from 1956 with a gap tooth only underscores that the president's stockpile of fossilized nickname nuggets seems to be running as low as his credit line with anyone other than Deutsche Bank. Soon, he's gonna be making references to like Doris Day, who just passed away, or, or I don't know, Beetle Bailey. By the way, here's how blind President Trump's devotion is to Fox News. He thought it would be a good idea to appear on a Fox weekend show airing last night opposite the Game of Thrones finale. And no, it actually wasn't the president's Islamophobe in arms, Judge Jeanine Pirro, but don't worry, she was still on air this weekend doing her best impression of that Amtrak seatmate you just cannot get away from. Grab your popcorn, junior mints, or whatever makes you happy. The real show is about to begin. This will be true reality TV. No scripts, no rehearsals, just a gang of criminals pointing fingers at each other to save their own hides. A version of true crime and the reality show Survivor. Wow, who wrote that? Biting. Talk about a way to turn me off junior mints. Anyway, Judge Janine thinks real life is like Survivor, which is interesting because her show is sort of like law and order when a suspect represents herself at trial and then punches the bailiff in the throat. It's hard to imagine the president would actually boycott Fox News though. I mean, surely he'll be back on the phone with Hannity sometime soon. Like one of those over, overnight, you know, late night talk radio callers riffing about Area 51. If there's anything that calms an angry President Trump, it's being fed like a bird by Fox News primetime on The Ridiculous.